Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Brief History Of, and today we'll be looking at the Ashford v Thornton trial. Murder is a serious crime, and if you're unlucky enough to be accused, you will hope that your lawyer is up to the task of defending you because, well, that's the only way you can defend your name. Not if it's 1818 and your name is Abraham Thornton, then you have one other option to stay out the hangman's noose. Trial by battle. Well, that is an odd option. Trial by battle was a method in Germanic law to settle a prosecution in the absence of a confession or witness to a murder. The right to use this type of trial was thought to have been introduced into common law of the Kingdom of England shortly after the Norman invasion of 1066. A wager of trial by combat could only be available to the defendant if they weren't caught in the act of the crime, had escaped from prison, or that there wasn't an overwhelming amount of evidence that made denial impossible. If the defendant met all these requirements, then they could appeal for a trial by combat. However, if the plaintiff was a woman, kind of sexist, over the age of 60, a minor, kind of ageist, lame or blind, a priest, citizen of the City of London, or a peer of the realm, then the trial would go to jury instead. This form of judicial procedure is pretty grim as essentially it's a state sanctioned duel to the death, and the stakes for both sides were pretty high. Apart from, you know, fighting for your life, that is. If the defendant was defeated in battle but still had an inch of life left in him, then they would be hanged on the spot. Oh, that was way harsh. However, if the plaintiff was defeated, they would be shunned by society, deprived of the privileges of a free man, and could be liable to pay the defendant damages. That's if they actually gave up the fight via the word craven, which stands for, <coughs> I've had enough and I don't want to die. Also, as well with all things medieval, before the battle could take place, both parties had to swear an oath against witchcraft and sorcery. It should be said that, at this point, pretty much all trial by battles died out in the British Isles around the 16th century, over 200 years before our story with Abraham Thornton. Thornton's legal predicament started off on the 26th of May, when he met Mary Ashford, aged 20, at a dance in Warwickshire and subsequently walked with her away from the event, so far so innocent you might think. But it was when Mary's body was found drowned in a nearby pit that things went downhill for Thornton. Public opinion was very much against the 24 year old, with pamphlets being sold purporting to Thornton's guilt. The trial lasted one day and after the jury deliberating for just six minutes, came back with a verdict of not guilty. It would take too long for me to go over the whole trial on here, but from what I read it does kind of look like Thornton was actually guilty, as he was with the victim all the way up until 4am and the body was found at 6am. It does look like the case was built partially on hearsay, but the judge in the trial does sound like he had some bias. The judge concluded by reminding the jury that it was better to let a murderer go free than an innocent man be convicted, and the jury didn't even leave the box to deliberate. Of course, it's difficult to really know if he was guilty or not, as his offence did boast 11 witnesses to establish his alibi. But Thornton did have bloodstains on his undergarments which matched the lacerations on Mary's body. So you'd think that after Thornton's release everything was settled, well not exactly. Thornton's acquittal was met with massive outrage across Warwickshire, as the trial was hugely publicised for the time. Following a campaign in a number of newspapers for an appeal on the result of the trial, funds were raised to re-prosecute Thornton. The plaintiff this time would be Mary's brother, 22-year-old William Ashford, and by the 1st of October 1817, a writ for appeal was issued and Thornton was re-arrested. The appeal was set to be heard at the King's Bench in London, and because of this, on the 28th of October, Thornton was transferred to the capital. Supporters of the Ashford family tried to find any extra evidence that would blow apart Thornton's alibis, but could not find anything definitive. On the 6th of November, the case was first heard, but quickly adjourned until the 17th, to give time for Thornton to get advice on his plea. On the 17th of October, when the case came to be heard at the King's Bench, the council had difficulty entering Westminster Hall due to the high number of people that had shown up to watch the appeal. When Thornton was called up to make his plea, he said, Not guilty, and I am ready to defend the same with my body. He then received a pair of leather gloves from his solicitor, put one on and threw the other one for William Ashford to pick up, thus accepting his proposition for trial by battle. Unsurprisingly, Ashford did not pick up the other glove. I can't blame him, I mean I wouldn't. 
Ashford's solicitor said to the court that Thornton should not be allowed to compound the murder of the sister with the attempted murder of the brother. Lord Chief Justice Lord Ellenborough responded, It is the law of England, Mr Clark. We must not call it murder. Ashford's counsel tried to argue that due to Ashford's age, which is kind of strange due to both parties being in their early 20s, and lack of physical strength, could not take part in trial by combat. Bit of a weak argument, you might say. Well, Thornton's counsel felt the same, claiming that Thornton had no other choice to defend himself because he would not get a fair trial by jury due to the exposure in the press of Mary's murder. The case was adjourned whilst Ashford's counsel could make pleadings to the court. Over the coming months, each side submitted pleadings to the court. Ashford claimed that there was enough evidence to disallow Thornton from waging battle, and Thornton claimed the opposite. It started to look like a stalemate, and by the 16th of April, it was even more looking that Ashford was going to lose the case. After short deliberation, the judges returned, stating, The discussion which has taken place here, and the consideration which has been given to the facts alleged, most conclusively show that this is not a case that can admit no denial or proof to the contrary. Under these circumstances, however obnoxious I am myself to the trial by battle, it is the mode of trial which we, in our judicial character, are bound to award. We're delivering the law as it is, not as we wish it to be, and therefore we must pronounce our judgement that the battle must take place. The matter was adjourned until the 20th to allow Ashford to decide to either drop the case or meet Thornton for battle. Finally, Ashford's counsel indicated that they had no objection to allow Thornton to go free. Thornton's attempt for boom or bust worked and was ushered out of a side entrance under Lord Ellingborough's advice due to the large angry mob outside. The case of Ashford v Thornton saw the end of trial by battle and English law, as by 1819 it had been taken out of the judicial process. Thornton returned to his home of Castle Bromwich and tried to restart his life. The exposure of the trial had made him a social pariah and because of this he immigrated to America where he worked as a bricklayer. Thornton passed away in 1860 after getting married and having two children. Ashford survived until 1867, where he was found dead in his bed at the age of 70. Would you ever wage battle to clear your name? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Did you enjoy the video? I hope you did. And if that's the case, please click subscribe, like and comment. And also, if you could, it would be absolutely amazing if you could share videos on any type of social media. And also, you can always follow me on Twitter, which is at plainly underscore D. Once again, thank you very much for watching.